The Magic the Gathering set of all four Commander decks is available for pre-order now. Affiliate link below. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater, and I'm just going to come out and say it. And if you guys want to unsubscribe or unfollow, I totally get it. I'm actually a really big fan of the amazing Spider-Man movies. I really, really liked the first one and the sequel. Not as much as the first one. I thought the first one was really great, but the sequel had a lot of good things about it too. And I was genuinely bummed when they decided not to pursue the amazing Spider-Man 3, especially after teasing the Sinister Six. When you tease when you tease my penis with the Sinister Six and then you cancel it, I got a little bit upset. Never mind the fact though that, that Spider-Man Homecoming, I think is a godsend to Marvel. They definitely were able to make that work in their favor the movie was fantastic and yes it teased the sinister six by showing us some different members like shocker and scorpion and yeah it tingled it tingled my wee wee a bit so I'm, I'm totally on board with that but i've always wondered what happened to amazing spider-man 3 what was going to be the movie because they teased a lot they were building a new cinematic universe with that film and maybe the, their problem was they tried too hard to do that, I would probably blame Alex Kurtzman. Same problem that happened to Dark Universe. But we now know a bit more because Mark Webb revealed the, the Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 3 plans. Saying here that Mark Webb has revealed what his plans were for Amazing Spider-Man 3. Uh, the 500 Days of Summer director boarded the Spider-Man franchise in the early 2010s after Sony Pictures decided to reboot the series rather than continue producing additional sequels with Sam Raimi at the helm. But let's be realistic here. They, 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 went, to, they went to Toby mcguire and they offered him like 50 million dollars or something like that for spider-man 4 and 5 they offered him money they offered sam raimi money it wasn't like it was just this well they kind of the, the spider-man 3 kind of wasn't the best thing ever but but no 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 no. They, they 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 wanted this they wanted it they wanted it bad i mean this was they they wanted it even worse after after uh iron man came out and the mcu was officially born so you know it wasn't like they just kind of went like hey We'll reboot it. No, the Sam Raimi was done. Tommy McGuire was done, and they wanted, you know, they had to wait a few years to bring it back. But uh, I like what they did with it. I really did. I thought I thought the movies were were well done. Um, and uh, so it says here that um, Mark Webb. <laughs> so it says here shortly after the Amazing Spider-Man two hit theaters, Sony Pictures canceled plans to produce the Amazing Spider-Man three and possibly a fourth installment in favor of sharing the web slinging superhero with Marvel Studios. But let, come on, like even that, even then, there's history. There's, there's history in that line. The history in that line is that the Sony hack from the end of 2014 showed us that the conversations had already gone on between Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal, they had broken down. But then, of course, when the fans learned about this, Sony had no choice but to act. They had no choice but to work the deal. And Amy Pascal knew she was on her way out as head of Sony Pictures. So she brokered that deal, putting herself in charge of the franchise under her own company banner in order to then work with Kevin Feige directly. So... It wasn't necessarily just in favor. It was it was a strategic business tactic when you knew that your job was basically over and you still wanted to get a paycheck that wasn't unemployment. Amy Pascal is very smart for what she did. She's also very horrible for everything involving Ghostbusters. Um, but in an interview with Ten of Geek, Webb briefly discussed what his plans were for the third installment, saying that Chris Cooper would have returned as Norman Osborn, except this time he would have been playing the Green Goblin. Which, granted, they showed us Harry Osborn as a Green Goblin uh, in Amazing Spider-Man 2, kind of jumping over everything with Chris Cooper. So going back in that particular regard would have been cool to see Norman Osborn as the Green Goblin because Willem Dafoe did such a great job. Such a great job as that character from Spider-Man in 2002. But here's what Mark Webb says. He says, yeah, we were talking about the Sinister Six. They were going to make a Sinister Six movie before we did the third one. But I wanted Chris Cooper uh, was going to come back and play the Goblin. We were going to freeze his head and then he was going to be brought back to life. And then there was this character called the gentleman. We had some notions about how to do it, but I think maybe we were thinking too far ahead when we started building those things, but it was, it was a fun exercise. I look back very fondly at those days. Okay. So let's, let's real talk moment here. Sony made the right move. Sony made the right move. That sounds crappy. They were going to freeze Chris Cooper's head. All right. Cause it, 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 and put him and, and put him on the green goblin. And then some dude called the gen, I don't know who the gentleman is. I just I don't know. Part of me thinks like Mr. Sinister, right? But that's a Fox thing. Um, and, and then, and then they were going to, that, that was, that was their plan. That, that was their, that was their plan. Uh, he goes on to say, 
um, that that uh, Harry Osborn, um, you know, would have returned for. Okay, Cooper would have returned for the sequel as the main villain before presumably reappearing in Sinister Six, uh, based on the super super villain team. So they would have established Chris Cooper as as the Green Goblin and then brought him into the Sinister Six, uh, saying, "Well, that was going to be the main villain. He was going to come out and lead the Sinister Six. We talked about Vulture a little bit too. Well, we saw some stuff for Vulture. I do believe in the end credit sequence of Amazing Spider Man two. This just shows you where Sony went wrong, in my opinion. This just shows you where Sony went wrong. This shows you precisely the the the, the line of thought that went into the the mess that it ended up becoming. As much as I enjoyed Amazing Spider-Man 2 for what it was, it was not a perfect film by any stretch of the imagination. Spider-Man Homecoming I thought was much better, even though they did play it a bit too safe. And I really liked how Mark Webb directed the first, you know, these 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 Amazing Spider-Man films. But you can also see that they wanted a cinematic universe. They wanted to combat Marvel. They wanted to do it probably after the events of the Avengers, you know, because Avengers and Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man came out in the same summer. Uh, They probably wanted to just kind of piggyback on that success. And that's just what happened is they got so far ahead of themselves in the development phase of the Amazing Spider-Man 2 that they really dropped the ball in terms of where to take it. Now, if you remember, Drew Goddard was going to direct the Sinister Six movie, but then uh, and he left the Daredevil TV series to go work on that. And then Goddard, as far as I know, left that project over creative differences. I could be wrong, but that's what I remember happening. Uh, and then, you know, it just kind of got put on ice, but now, now we've got Spider-Man in the MCU and Sony is once again, screwing it up. Amy Pascal talking about the Venom movie. That's going to be start shooting here in the next couple months. The Silver Sable Black Cat film also aiming to come out not too long after Venom next fall just doesn't make sense. It's this all over again. And it just, it's, it shows you a lack of foresight that Amy Pascal has for trying to run these particular organizations uh, and these particular franchises. This is one of the reasons why Disney, instead of buying a, a tech company to stream your movies, just just buy out Sony, buy all the stock, get control of Spider-Man back, and then and then you're good. But don't let Amy Pascal touch any more things because this and that completely prove that she sucks at what she does but i want to know what you guys think about this do you think that this sounds like an interesting concept even though it's not much of a concept do you think that it's an interesting concept do you think that uh, it would have been a good movie or do you think we are just as fans of uh, spider-man as fans of uh, comic book movies as just fans of maybe pop culture in general just better off as a result of this and and i'm very curious to know your guys' thoughts let me know in the comments below my name is of course matt jarbo this has been three buck theater i will talk to you guys later have yourself a great day remember support the channel you want to thumbs it up you want to share it around you want to comment you want to you want to you want to support me on patreon you guys want to do all those things i'll talk to you all later have a great day peace out